Hey, this is Brent with Lackens Motorsports. If you remember the video from a couple days ago, we did an interview with Jay Brown regarding his new cylinder heads. In this video, we are going to do some cylinder head assembly. So stay tuned for, for that work. All right, so now we're gonna begin some assembly on these heads. I've already CC'd a chamber on each head. Uh, this particular chamber sat at 61.2. The opposite cylinder head was 61.0, so uh, close enough that uh, no milling is necessary. I wanted to check that out before I went ahead and assembled. Um, again, these are uh, not typical FE valves uh these particular valves are titanium custom titanium valves from ferrea they're very long compared to fe stuff intake valve is 95.9 grams 74.1 on the exhaust valve overall length is about 6350 so um almost a full inch over an FE valve, typical FE valves are around 5.450 or 5.5, so a little bit longer than typical stuff. These are 5.16 stem, let me see if I can get the camera to focus. Uh, radial, radius groove lock, and hardened tips. But uh, I've already swapped out the guides on, on this head. Uh, copper beryllium seats. Just a note, uh, the spark plug that you need for these is um, a lot longer reach than what we would typically reach for for a, an FE spark plug. This is a one inch reach. So uh, for this build, I'll be using an Autolite plug and I'll probably try to nail down the heat range later on. I have a set of 5325s uh, for, for testing purposes right now and that might put me in the heat range that I'll need to be at for for this street engine so just a couple of um go over what the build is going to be like i know that i'm hopping around here because i keep thinking of different things to say but this is going to be a 496 cubic inch engine and um a shelby aluminum block we're going to use a a billet bryant crank with some Callie's rods and some custom diamond pistons. It will be a dry sump engine. And um, we using one of Jay's uh, EFI intakes on this one. A solid roller camshaft. Um, try to get as lightweight components as we possibly can. So very good parts, uh, hoping for some big horsepower, a lot bigger horsepower than what we normally would see with um, another uh, cylinder head family on, on the FE. But um, here's what we're looking at. And um, as, as we pointed out some of the key parts in, in the interview video, bronze valve guides, obviously. These heads have been ported. They flow uh, 430 CFM at 800 lift, which just so happens to be where our camshaft is sitting. So we'll take advantage of that flow. Um, I worked with Bullet on some uh, lobes that would be streetable uh, with that much lift and put us in the RPM range that we want to be in as well as not requiring a lot of spring load. So um, we're gonna be sitting somewhere around the 270, 280 seat and probably around 680 open. We'll know uh, a little bit more detail on that once I uh, start measuring for install heights and checking spring loads. But for right now, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna get started. I've already swabbed out the valve guys with some lacquer thinner on some uh, rifle cleaning patches that does quick work of making sure everything's clean. Uh, wash the valves and we're going to get those loaded and I'm going to start unboxing some parts. Mainly titanium retainers. Um, some mainly beadlock 
valve locks for 10 degree retainers and our retainers are 10 degree. Then we're gonna install some uh, Viton valve seals for Manly as well. I like a lot of Manly products. Uh, that's why I'm gonna go with uh, this set of valve springs. These are Next Tech springs. We'll get those measured up in a bit. But um, hopefully we'll get some assembly work done here in a second. We're gonna unbox our retainers and our locks and our uh, spring locators and uh, start measuring some install heights. Okay, so began my uh, initial install height measurements and uh, just took a couple of 15,000 shims to get everything pretty close. And um, I know where I'm gonna be on my install height, so now I'm gonna take um, my, uh, I'm sorry, a retainer and a valve spring, and we're gonna put these in the spring tester. And I will go ahead and map out all 16 valve springs, and we will record uh, the coil bind height as well as the seat pressure at two inches and 50 thousandths and the open uh, spring load at 800 lift. So this is the, the Manly Next Tech valve spring. Uh, this particular spring is uh, has what they're what they call an enhanced surface finish. It's been polished and that helps to reduce any stress concentrations. Uh, these are really nice valve springs. Like I said, I try to use either Manly or PAC or PSI for higher end applications. These are not cheap. Uh, they're almost $700 a set, uh, but they are well worth it. These are called endurance springs. So they are good for uh, any type of like road racing or street use or, or anything. Uh, you know, valve springs are, are manufactured per the use. So, um, you know, some valve springs will take a, a heat load, an extended heat load better than others. And uh, you just have to buy, buy your valve spring according to, to the application. These are good pieces though. Okay, for this first cylinder head, got everything measured, our springs measured. I record all the data uh, by valve, so I know exactly what it was. Just really high quality springs. Uh, you know, if they vary, it's, um, you know, maybe about 1% on the seat load. Open loads are pretty much all in there together. Uh, now the coil bind uh, is, is a different deal with Manly Springs. Manly is the only one that offers this warning uh, about coil bind. Proper clearance from coil bind is critical to the performance of these valve springs. Too little clearance can overstress the part while too much can promote, promote spring surge. Neither is a good option. Ideal coil bind clearance is achieved at the open height listed on the label. Do not go below it and only increase it by 50 thousandths maximum if necessary. So our open load that they want us to stay at is 1,250. And uh, we are pretty much there, but what, uh, we, well, within three or four thousandths of an inch, we are pretty much there, which is, um, you know, I, I wouldn't consider that critical. But what I do do is go ahead and measure the coil bind distance because you know even even these good valve springs will vary on the coil bind by 20 thousands or so and you can tell you know look at this one 1152 this one's 1176 so there's 24 thousands difference between those and what i did was i just wanted to make sure that at open lift i had more than 50 or 60 thousandths coil bind clearance and all of these came up to be I think between 70 and 80. So I am both following Manley's uh, guidelines for, for these springs and I'm following my own rules of not going under 50 or 60 thousandths coil bind clearance. All these valve spring manufacturers pretty much have, uh, they manufacture these springs to operate at a specific clearance. Um, some of them want you to run the springs at 80,000, some at 100. So um, I usually try to follow uh, the, the valve spring uh, manufacturer's wishes on that. And um, in, in this situation, we have, we have both followed their wishes and my own guidelines. So 
what I'm going to do now is get all these valves out of the head and we're going to put our Viton valve seals on and get our valves lubed up and pushed in. All right, one of my biggest pet peeves is having to hammer on valve seals. Uh, I don't really think that that's the way that it should be sometimes. You get a tolerance stack up between the guide OD and the inside of the valve seal. But for the most part, it's awfully nice when they just go on with an interference fit or just a slight press fit. If you're finding yourself having to hammer stuff on, um, it tends to beat up the top of the seal and it's just not a good good way to be. I've always liked this comp cams um, assembly lube for valves. It doesn't solidify, which is nice. And um, it's not too thick or, or too thin, it stays on there. But uh, just give the valve a good coat. Push it in. This stuff stays on for as long as uh, you need it to, pretty much. And then under engine operating parameters, it uh, just kind of goes away very easily. One thing you always need to do is to check your retainer to seal clearance. I have about 860 thousandths on, on this particular pair right here. And uh, 60 thousandths after lift is, is plenty. But you always go through and check. Uh, different retainers are made differently. Uh, some of the pack retainers are pretty thick and pretty tall. So that gives you less clearance. But uh, you always take time to measure. Here's another thing about titanium valves. Titanium valves either come with a hardened tip, like this one here, you can see it, there's a band from here up, or they come with no hardened tip. With a hardened tip, um, you can run uh, spring loads, it doesn't really matter. If they don't have the tip, then you have to run a last cap, or you will mushroom the end of that titanium valve. And here we are with an assembled cylinder head. If you haven't uh, watched the interview with Jay Brown that I did this week, be a good opportunity for you to go over to that video. It's uh, it's not short; it's about 50 minutes long, but uh, he talks at length about what went into the design of these heads and how the rocker arms attach and and all that stuff. So it's worth watching. Got this one done, gonna hop to the other one. Here's a close up of the chamber. Just a real heart shaped modern chamber. Ferrea titanium valves, bronze valve guides. This customer requested copper brilliant seats. So that's what these are. Again, here's another shot of the valves. And we are on to measuring install heights on this other head. All right, and just like that, we have an assembled pair of cylinder heads. Everything turned out real nice. I'm gonna get these bagged up and uh, start waiting on other parts to start uh, trickling in. The block is uh, being worked on right now. We ordered some lifter bore bushings. I'm gonna run a, a 903 diameter uh, lifter, solid roller lifter for this. And uh, we're gonna have lifter board bushings installed. Uh, crankshaft is ordered and uh, we're just plugging along. But now the cylinder heads are assembled and we are that much further done on this project. All right, guys, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, as I mentioned, if, I, if you haven't already, take the time to sit down and watch uh, the video of uh, the interview with Jay Brown about these cylinder heads. I'm getting ready to sneeze. Nope.
false alarm. Um, and, and catch up on these. Uh, I really think these are going to be some big power makers, uh, as already shown by his uh, 511 cubic inch dyno mule. But um, I've got a couple of engine builds coming up that will use these heads, and I'm looking forward to, to seeing what they do. If you haven't taken time yet, hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on the rest of this build and all the others that we have coming up. Thank you very much for watching. This is Brent with Lackens Motorsports.